Hey, how's it going? I'm Ash. Just thought I'd make my uh, first video on the guns that I own. I noticed a lot of people have been making these like collection videos. And I thought I'd give it a shot. I'm uh, British. I've been in the US like for, like probably about four years now, collecting for just a little little over three. Don't have a whole bunch, but what I've got I do love. Um, definitely want more, but I wouldn't be a gun guy if I didn't. Um, so here's my first one. Let's so this is a Ruger LC9S. Uh, you all probably know what this is if you're a gun if you're gun people. Uh, bought this as a like everyday carry option. It's really light. It's chambered in nine. Uh, I like it. It was like I think it was like two hundred and fifty bucks when I bought it new, with two mags and the box and everything. Um, don't really carry this anymore. Don't really like the mag safety. I don't know. The sights are kind of shit. Um, but the trigger and everything is good. I mean, it's it's, it's accurate. Not a bad little gun. All right. So moving over to the next one. This is a CZ uh, eighty two. Uh, made in 1988, I believe. This gun is is pretty beat up. I got this from M Surplus. It's like a CNR gun. Uh, it shoots nine millimeter Makarov, and is I mean it's accurate as hell, and it's so smooth to shoot. I really, really, really want to refinish this one. I've seen people cold blue them, strip them, and cold blue them, and put wood grips on them, and they look fucking beautiful. I mean, they're 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 nice looking guns. Uh, the black finish is on there now. The standard finish is kind of shitty. But, yeah. Good gun. Um, fun to shoot. They are a bitch to completely disassemble. It can be kind of confusing to put back together. If you're, I mean, if you're taking it fully apart. But, yeah. So, let's move on to the next one. Which is my uh, Young American Safety Hammer. Uh, this is chambered in 32 black powder, I believe. Pretty cool little gun. Paid 50 bucks for this. Actually, sorry, no, I paid 30 bucks for this. It's really rusty and rough. Has a lot, but I mean, it has some of the nickel finish still on there. You can see, and you can see here it says patent, patented, April 5th, 1887. But I believe this was manufactured in the late, like later 1800s, so like maybe like 1895, something like that. Uh, not shot this, does function fine, timing and everything is great, but finding ammo sucks. So, uh, Next one is my SIG P229C carry. This was the first gun that I ever bought. Got this from Dix like a retard, and I uh, paid far too much for it. Um, it's the Gen 1, so there's no rail for the flashlight or laser, which fucking sucks. Really fun to shoot though, do shoot this a lot. Too heavy to carry for me. I prefer something a little lighter. Mainly because I'm a fat gun that needs to lose weight. And I cannot... I my, my pants will not stay up if I wear this, bitch. Just just won't stay up. You know, the finish is, like, pretty resistant. I've, you know... Fucking... I, I mean, I've, I've, like, thrown this gun around a bunch when it's been empty. And... Yeah, it's pretty good. I mean, it's... I, I ever got a baby in my guns like people do. It's a fucking sick. It's, it's meant to be shot. And that's what it is. I mean, it's a tool. Just like a Glock or HK. So, alright, next one. This is a Smith & Wesson Model 10. This was a CO or police officer trading uh, from New York. And it came with the, with the, with the original holster, uh, speed loaders and speed loader pouches. Most of the bluing on this is, is, is fine. There's a there's a bit of you know there's a bit of holster wear and stuff where it's been carried. But <clears throat> I mean it, it functions great. I fucking love this first revolver I bought, actually, and I paid like I mean I paid like two hundred and twenty bucks for this model ten. Ball barrel as well, so I can shoot plus P's. And I mean I would I mean I would probably go as far as saying this is the best like two hundred and twenty bucks I, I ever spent. Um, I shot a, I think I shot a 1917 Smith and Wesson, and that's what made me want to get a revolver. And I definitely want more. This is this this will be my last. And then there's this. This is my uh, TT33 Tokarov. Uh, this one's kind of weird. There's no import marks on it, no safety. This was a gift um, from a family member. Um, weird thing about this gun is 
they're, it's all matching, slide, everything, frame, everything matches, serial number wise, but I believe this was a bring back, um, actually has Izzy marks on it, Russian Izzy marks, so it's all, it's all Russian, but I think after it was used in service, it was damaged, and it was sent back to the factory and restamped. so, uh, I don't know if you can see here, but, you can see where the date usually is on the frame. It has actually been starred out completely. I believe that is when they put a new slide on the gun. Because the slide is a later later issue slide. Uh, but it matches completely. Same serial number and everything. So I'm pretty sure that's what's going on. This was probably uh, probably probably put into service in, in I mean, I don't know if it was like a Nam gun or whether it was like Korea. I don't know. I don't know if it saw World War Two. I'd like to think it did. And then, obviously, after it was refurbished at the factory, it saw more service, but I, I don't know. Looks like a bring back to me, with no import marks or anything. Um, but I love this. This is this is probably one of the coolest guns I own. I don't shoot it much, but I do enjoy it. So, next one is the first 1911 that I've ever bought. This is a standard manufacturing 1911. Chambered in forty five, <coughs> um, this is this is probably the nicest gun that I own in terms of quality. Hasn't I mean I, I've got I've had no breaking period with this. I shot three mags out of it. I've had no fillies to feed, uh, no stove piping. You know, which is everybody's like, oh, stove pipe nine eleven. But this 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 works really well. You probably can't see it very well either, but the uh, like the slide release, the safety, the screws are all fire blued, and then the rest of the gun is like old school coal coal blued. I mean, this is this is fucking like the most beautiful gun. Uh, walnut grips doesn't get much more American than walnut grips. I mean, I I love this gun. Um, I definitely want to get maybe a nickel one of these too. When I'm not poor, and I'd like to get some of their single action armies too. I mean, this is this is such a beautiful gun. It's so smooth to shoot. Comes in a nice presentation box, you know, with a bunch of stuff. I mean, this is this is the last pistol as well in my collection, but it is great. I mean, I would recommend these for sure, guys. If if you like if you like pistols, handguns, especially if you like 1911s, and that's that's all my pistols. But we'll move on to rifles and shotguns. You'll see that I, that I like Millsaps a lot. <laughs> my my first rifle is a Marlin 336, chambered in 3030. I love this gun a lot. It's the only lever action that I own right now, but I, I definitely want more. Um, this was someone's deer gun, I'm, I'm guessing. Um, it came with skirt rings, and it's uh, so one of the older 336s. Before Remington bought them out. So it's pretty smooth. It's really nice. I shoot this often to be honest. At the range which is probably strange. I don't know if people shoot 30-30 a lot at the range. But I do. <laughs> um, really want. I, I want some like pistol cartridge lever actions. I want like a three fifty seven, um, You know stuff like that. Some of the old West ones would be cool. Some of the old Winchesters. Um. But I mean, I love this gun. Something about lever actions that I love. I don't know if it's just me that finds this. I'm sure everybody else does too. But they point really well. They're so easy to aim. Uh, you know, I can rack it from the shoulder with no problems. I stay on target. And, and, and I just love them. I mean, I want more. Uh, moving on to my second rifle. This is a cheap, cheap like Stevens 22 from the 50s. I believe it was, or 60s. This is the only 22 I own right now. I was going to get a Ruger 10 22. That's what I really wanted. But <coughs> my boss owns a, he owns a gun shop, and he actually got this in, and he paid 50 bucks for it. And he let me have it for 50 bucks, which was which was nice. Shot, I've shot this quite a lot, because it's cheap. I bought, I mean, I bought, like, fucking, I think it was, like, 6,000 rounds from Brownells when they had a deal on and I, I've shot this a fair amount. You can see here, like, the wood has actually got burn marks on it from the cheap-ass ammo that I shoot. <laughs> I think it's, uh, I, don't, I can't remember what ammo it was, but it is cheap. It's dirt, the dirtiest ammo I've ever shot out of any gun. 
At one point, it actually ejected a spent casing and it got stuck in the in like the stock as well. So, but that's the only ever like the only malfunction I've ever had with it. It's uh, it's got loads of rust spots on it that I've that I've like basically dremeled off and coal blued and fixed. And it, I mean, it cleaned up okay. It's it's cheap. It's good. Moving on to Millsaps, I have my uh, VZ fifty two, chambered in the original seven six two by forty five. Not re-sleeved like most of them are for 39, like, you know, the AK round. Um, this, I actually traded a, I traded a piece of shit Mosin for this. Uh, the Mosin that I had would not fucking chamber, it chamber around, fire around, and then it would lock up completely. I tried everything, I tried cleaning it out in every way, shape or form. Nothing would fucking, nothing would save it. So I traded a piece of shit Mosin for this. This was actually a pile of rust when I got it. But it was mostly surface rust, so I was lucky. Uh, other thing that's weird about this is the stock. Most stocks on these are like are like a light finish. Mine is plum, and it's kind of like shellac. So I posted this on Reddit, and somebody said that it was probably, uh, pro probably seen action in, in Egypt. Because apparently... Uh, a lot of the people, like a lot of the like forces in Egypt, do shellac their guns like that, like the Russians. Uh, bayonet's kind of cool too. It folds out and folds in with a push of a button. Uh, magazines on these are expensive as fuck, which is annoying, and ammo is expensive too. I've not shot this because I have heard that the ammo is kind of unpredictable, and, it, and uh, I don't know. Somebody somebody said to me that, that they've had a couple of rounds cook off in theirs with surplus ammo. I don't believe that really. I mean, I should shoot it. It's a C, it's a CZ. I mean, it's going to be a good gun. It's, it's going to function fine. So, uh, But my, my next rifle is a Mosin Nagant. So, first one that I had was a piece of shit made in 1939. This one was made in 1943. Uh, this is really, really smooth. Mosins are not usually smooth, but this one is. Uh, last time I took this to the range, I shot 50 rounds through it with um, with ease. The action is like butter, which is weird for a Mosin. Um, obviously, the finish is good because it's a factory refurb, like, like the majority of them are. Most of them are. But <coughs> this is one that I'll never sell because I... I feel like it's hard to find a Mosin that shoots nice. And a Mosin that bolts nice. And you know, this this is this is I feel like this is kind of a kind of a rare fucking typical Russian Mosin in terms of like function functionability. Fun functionality? Whatever whatever the word is. But I, I do love this gun. I love Mosins and I really want a thin Mosin, like bad. You know, obviously everybody does with the, with the stripey, stripey finish stocks and the, and you know the, uh, uh, what's it called, the wing sights. Um, I I will probably own a lot more Mosins in my time as well as other Millsaps. I can, I would like to have one from every year, which is not. I mean, as I said, it sounds excessive, but it's not. I mean, you you know, you want to get as many as possible, so. Uh, moving on to my next rifle. This is a, a <coughs> Lee Enfield number one Mark III. Kind of strange this one. Um, I've I since I was probably like eight, I've always wanted a Lee Enfield. And being in the UK sucked. I mean, I could get one, but the amount of shit that I would have to go through to get one, and the price that I would have to pay to earn one, would take the fun out of earning it. Um, this one is dated 1940 on the wrist strap was made by BSA uh, has the mag cut off which is kind of rare I think this was actually made during World War 1 by BSA used in World War 1 and then I think it was sent to Lith though, in Australia uh, refurbished and then used in World War Two, hence the 1940 date, which looks like it's been restamped, kind of. Because it has B uh, both BSA and Lithgow markings, 
but all of the numbers match, stock included, serial numbers match, all the markings are there, um, not shot this gun, I own a bunch of ammo for it and I intended to shoot it, but the thing is, is it has a, it has a bunch of cracks in the stock and I'm worried that it's going to, it's going to fall apart, I would pay someone to get it fixed, but I don't trust anyone to fix it, you know, I want to see like, physical examples of what they've done before I let them fix it, which might make me sound like a dick, but, you know, I don't want to give it to some fucking Joe Schmo gunsmith, and then he start drilling out pieces of wood to put fucking whatever he puts in there, you know, wood filler, poly filler, you know, or like, rods to strengthen it, and then he fucking makes the gun look like a Frankenstein gun. I'd rather just keep it the way it is, buy another one and shoot that, which I don't think that makes me stupid to do that, but... I just don't want some jabroni fucking ruining my gun. Because, yeah, I, I love it. And I, I want more Enfields too. This is the only one I own. And I definitely want more. But let's move on to my next one. This is a Type 99 Arizaka. Chambered in 7.7 .7 Jap. This is a last ditch. So it was made, like, late production. It was made towards the end of the war. I can't recall which date it was. I want to say it was 1945. Um... No aerial sights, no dust cover. Mum is intact. Has a, a wooden butt plate that was nailed nailed down. The uh, sling, swivel loops are nailed in. Oh, actually, they're screwed in, but they're, they're, it's like the late war ones, I believe. Bolt, you know, like the bolt on the end usually has like a... <coughs> bolt on the end usually has like... Kind of like a design on it. This one is completely flat. Like, like they put like no effort into making. Well, they put effort into making it, but not as much as the as the earlier models. Other than that, it's pretty nice. I bought this at an estate sale for two hundred bucks, and I don't regret it at all. I've not shot this. I I am gonna shoot it. I know Steinel makes uh, seven point seven ammo now, when it's supposed to be close to original specs. So I am gonna shoot it at some point. Um. There's a shot of the, of the butt plate, the wooden butt plate. Definitely would like some earlier examples of this, as well as all my other Millsaps. And I don't own a bayonet for this one yet. I try, I've been trying to get one, but they keep they keep just jumping away from me. Uh, I will get one. Maybe a couple of examples, actually, because I know there's a couple of different, different bayonets for this, like design-wise, early and late. Um, so, yeah. Moving on to my next gun. This is another Type 99, chambered in 7.7 .7 as well. Uh, might have actually been rechambered in 7mm Mauser. Uh, this one's kind of weird, it's been bubbered. Not by me, by the previous owner. Got it from the same estate sale as the last one. Uh, has, it's obviously been cut down, but done well. Uh, stock might have been refinished, I don't know. Stock is kind of nice, there's not really much damage to it. And he added some kind of weird peep sight uh, to the rear. And he removed the wings off the aerial sight, which I don't really understand why he would do that, but he did. Um, trying to see if I can show you. It's been cut off there. The sight's been cut ground down. Uh, wings have been taken off the, the aerial sight. And then, you know, there's no mum, which sucks. But this is the weird-ass peep sight. It's like an, I think it's an early peep sight. I don't, I'm not sure. Um, not shot this either, gonna shoot it though, definitely, once I figure out what calibre it's, it's chambered in. Weird piece of wood that I think he added to the, to the, to the, to the end of the butt. I think he added like, the, like an inch piece of wood and he added a steel butt plate to the end of it, whoever, whoever did it. But yeah, I mean, overall, you know, I mean, I'm talking about the fucking wing sights too late there, but it's fine. Um, overall, I think the gun <coughs> is pretty cool. Uh, I paid a hundred and I think it was hundred and thirty dollars for this one, and I don't regret it either. Kind of a cool gun. Uh, may I may trade this out eventually, but who knows? And here is my next rifle. This one is a, a Russian capture K ninety eight K Mauser, made in nineteen forty three. Uh, the uh, bolt, the, uh, the the receiver wall is plumbed and it is electro penciled so probably force matched 
Um, other than that, it has all the markings on it. The waffens are all still there. Uh, clean. It did not come with a cleaning rod, which is standard with the Russian captures. Uh, I bought the cleaning rod actually from from the Netherlands. It's supposed to be an original K98K cleaning rod. Uh, so that's kind of cool. Um, you see the markings now. There you go. Um, so the so the the receiver and the and the stock actually do match, but the bolt doesn't match. Uh, this one I have shot and it is really fun to shoot. Hurts like a bitch, but you know, is really fun. I, I've shot this a few times. Uh, funny story about this one. <clears throat> I actually traded a mismatch SKS and a Kyber Pass Martini Henry. When I say Kyber Pass Martini Henry, I mean, I mean a gun that had a piece of pipe as a barrel. And it didn't function. It was literally just like a like a like a wall gun. Uh, guy knew that when we was trading, but he still wanted it. I traded for this. He gave me this with a with a fucking bunch of ammo. Um, and this is, I mean, it's a pretty clean example, really, of a of a K ninety eight. Still looking for a bayonet for this one. Don't have one. I keep bidding on them on eBay, but they keep getting away from me. Um, Really want a clean example to go with a gun. Preferably the same year too would, would be nice. Uh, but yeah, K98 K. So moving on to my to my next one. So rifles are out, shotguns are in. Uh, this is a Remington Model 10 made in 1912. I got this from a, an estate sale as well. <coughs> Not that long ago. Um, kind of pissed me off because this one, this one, he said in the description that it all functioned fine. But I got it and it didn't. Uh, it's a takedown model, so it has a little lever at the end that you can like kind of like swivel out, and then the whole barrel and the mag tube, you know, like swivels, and you just basically basically pull it out. Uh, that lever was missing, and whatever retard tried to take down the gun, um, he actually twisted it the wrong way, and it was stuck. So I had to let my 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 uh, boss take care of that for me because I I didn't want to break it. Been, with it being as old as it is, um, a couple of other parts was missing too, but we we, we found them, we got them. Um, gun functions now. I probably won't ever shoot it. Uh, I, I might I might I might shoot it. I don't know, but uh, this was cheap. It was like hundred dollars. Kinda was a good deal. Kinda wasn't. Actually, probably two hundred dollars with the fucking parts that I bought. So maybe it wasn't a good deal. <laughs> uh, but moving on to my next shotgun. This is a JC Higgins Model 20. This was like a cheap catalog gun that was built in the in the 50s. I say cheap because it was like a more affordable gun for people. It was made by Sears, I think. Well, it was sold by Sears but made by JC Higgins, which was... Uh, what was it? I want to say it was high standard. Something like that. I don't know. Um, it's got a cool muzzle brake on the end of it. Comes with three different chokes. This one's actually in really good condition for a 1950s shotgun. Not really much wear on it. Barely any wear on the mag tube where the pump slides back and forth. Um, it's, it's a pretty nice gun. It's so, so smooth. If I release the bolt, it just, you know, the whole, the whole pump just drops down. The bolt drops. Like butter, I don't have to even. I don't even have to pull it back. Um, I love this shotgun, and I, I definitely don't regret buying it. This was, uh, I think, it was two hundred dollars, and I mean, you know, it's not. It's not like a high end shotgun, but I do love it, and I will. I will never sell this. This is. This is one that'll stay with me forever, for as long as well. For as long as I'm on this earth, anyway. Uh, pretty cool. Pretty cool gun. Uh, moving on to my next shotgun. Fucking hate myself for recording this one the wrong way, but another JC Higgins Model 20. Uh, this one has been cut down by the previous owner to like a trench gun style, riot gun style. This one was made in the 60s, and it has a lot more finish wear on it. It's been used more. Uh, has like a checkered pump and checkered stock, which is kind of cool. The other one doesn't have that. Uh, I think it was made cheaper. The... the uh, like trigger guard and stuff, you can definitely tell that 
that's not blued. It's got like some other weird finish on it. Um, feels a feels a little feels a little cheaper in quality, but but the check ring's nice. Um, so sorry for recording this one the wrong way. I'm fucking my brain's fried. Uh, moving on to my next one. So something that every American should own. Obviously, <clears throat> AR15. When I first got here, I was really into more modern guns. I didn't. I mean, I liked all the millseps, but like an AR was the was the thing that I wanted. Like bad, you know. Like, it's it's cool as hell. Um, this one's kind of a cheap build, though. It's I, this was the first second gun that I bought, I guess after the after the Mosin. Uh, built. I got a stag arms, low receiver, hug grip, magpul stock. Um, just a no-name fucking buffer tube. Uh, upper was Palmetto State Armory, which I know a lot of people hate, but it's, I mean, I've had it for three years now, and I've shot probably three, I'd say 3,000 rounds through it, 4,000 rounds through it, and it's still fine. Uh, the only thing that does suck about this, this fucking gun, is where the charging angle rides forward, it seems to like I don't know if it's like chipped or whether the finish is just coming off the gun. I mean, you can see it right here. It's, it is fucking a little bit annoying, but that's what happens when you buy cheap, cheap shit. I guess. I do want to build a. I'd like to build like a a BCM or a, <clears throat> a BCM or like a Daniel Defense AR. You know, maybe maybe even just like a Spikes. Neveski. The best, however you pronounce it. Um, I don't know. There's, there's a bunch of like of like stuff that I, I'm gonna build a pistol at some point, and I'll probably, I mean, I'll probably go all out price wise on my pistol. I won't build another budget build. Uh, I do have a red dot for this too, but the red dot was cheap as well, so I'm not even gonna mention that. Just a no name piece of shit. And that is the last of my guns. Um, so. I know this video quality, the video quality for this kind of sucked, um, but yeah, I just, it was fun to make it. I love guns. I love America. This is like my favorite hobby ever. It's something I've always wanted to do since I was since I was a kid. I've always wanted to be able to collect firearms. Always loved firearms. It's not the only thing I collect. I collect a lot of like surplus stuff anyway. You know, like old ammo cans and uh, bayonets. Flags and uh, newspaper articles from like, from like World War Two, World War One if I can find them, which is impossible almost. Um, yeah, I mean I I, I, collect, I collect anything that I think is cool. Um, I, I I definitely want more guns. I will have more guns. I want an M1 Garand really bad, and a carbine carbine. But uh, will I will get both of those at some point? Um, trying to think what else I want. I mean, I, the, 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 there's, there's thousands of guns that my list grows like every day, which is the same for all of us, I guess. The like guns, the list never stops growing. Always a new gun that you want, and uh, I appreciate you guys watching my video. Um. I might, I might start making gun videos like when I buy new ones just for fun. Uh, if you want to hear like a Brit's fucking take on something, like on on guns or whatever, you know, drop me, drop me a, a subscribe if if you feel like it. If not, never mind. But thank you for watching, and have a great, have a great day, guys, or night, or whatever. Thanks. Bye.